Brand new polling data shows Donald Trump surging in the key swing states. What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back in with a new video and today. It is time to talk about the 2024 presidential election because everyone... We have brand new polling data out of the key swing states. And remember when everyone said that the Trump campaign was going to collapse and Biden was going to surge because of the guilty verdict? Remember that? Because the Biden campaign and Democrats were banking on the guilty verdict to win the presidency. Well, guess what? The new polling data out of the key swing states show, no, there isn't a surge for Biden. In fact, in a couple of the swing states, Trump has actually gained support. Yeah. This is post-guilty verdict. This should be the best polling data for Biden. And guess what? It's not. Now, before I continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below. Subscribe. Share with your friends. Hit that little bell. Follow social media accounts in the description down below. And, of course, join the channel today. Again, folks, all support is greatly appreciated. And, uh, yeah. Now, I understand that this is only one poll. Like, okay, Emerson College, it's only one pollster, and some people think it's a bad pollster. It's not. Yes, Emerson has some bizarre results here and there, but usually they're a pretty solid pollster. Usually, again, they're not always perfect. They sometimes have mistakes, but they show, yeah, Trump is leading in the key swing states. So let's just get into it. New Emerson College polling slash the Hill State polls find former President Donald Trump with a slight edge on President Biden in Arizona, Georgia, Wisconsin, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Michigan, while Biden splits with Trump in Minnesota. Yeah. So Trump is winning by four points in Arizona, Georgia. He's winning Wisconsin by three points. Same thing in Nevada. Hell, he's winning Pennsylvania and Michigan by two to one points, respectively. But the state that took me completely off guard was Minnesota. Yet another poll that shows Trump is tied in Minnesota. Listen, I still have my doubts about this because you're talking about a substantial shift from 2020. But if Trump is doing this much better in Wisconsin, Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, is it really that big of a surprise to say maybe he's tied in Minnesota? I'm not saying that's going to be the case. But as of now... That's what Emerson College found, and look at the polling trends. Look at this. They've been pulling the swing states for like eight months now, and we have a consistent trend where Trump has been leading everywhere for like six to seven months. And again, this isn't a random pollster. This is Emerson College. Again, sometimes they have some wonky polls, but usually they're spot on. And right now, they show for most of the swing states, Trump has been leading since February. And not by one point in every state. No, he's been leading by a lot. But ever since April, look at some of these states. States like Nevada and Wisconsin, Trump's lead has actually expanded versus in April. Not a single state, according to this poll. Again, it's Emerson College. They could be wrong, whatever. But of the swing states since April, that's before the guilty verdict. And now we have the polling after the fact. As of now, Trump has not lost any support, margin-wise. States like Georgia, he went from 47% to 45%, but Biden's drop was even larger. So Trump's lead in Georgia has actually expanded. Again, his vote share went down, but so did Biden's. There's not a single state, according to Emerson, that Biden has shrunk the lead for Trump. Not a single one. Not even like Nevada or Pennsylvania, no. Not a single one. In our first point in several key swing states since Trump's conviction last month, there has been little movement with support for both Trump and Biden staying largely consistent since November. Spencer Kimball, executive director of Emerson College Polling, said, Notably, results fall within the poll's margin of error. And that's the one takeaway that people got to understand. These results are still within the margin of error. They could be off. But the fact that Trump is leading by three points in Wisconsin, two in Pennsylvania, three in Nevada, etc. So you're going to tell me with a straight face that Emerson College, and not just them, but virtually every other pollster, this is not just Emerson finding this, virtually every other pollster is finding the same lead as Emerson College. You're telling me, for the first time since Trump got into politics, the polling's going to overstate his support. Really. 
Do, do you actually believe that? It could theoretically maybe by a point, but the misses we're talking about in states like Georgia, Arizona, etc., you're talking about a four to five point miss. That's not a small miss. That's a massive one. Is it, is it possible? I guess. But is it likely? Hell no. And for those saying that, well, in 2022, many of these states had a polling miss in favor of Republicans. Guess what? In most of those states, it was a two to three point miss at most. But that's without Trump on the ballot. People got to understand. Trump wasn't running in 2022. That's an argument you could make that, well, since he wasn't on the ballot, that's why Republicans underperformed. It's possible. Look at 2016 and 2020 versus 2018 and 2022. Republicans did worse, according to the polling, when Trump's off the ticket versus when he's on it. So it's like, well, okay, with that in mind, you could argue, well, with Trump on the ballot, the misses should be closer to 2020 or even 2016 than 2018 or 2022. That's just my opinion. Could it be off? Again, I can understand the idea that, well, for the first time, there could be a miss in favor of Biden. Maybe. It's possible. But you're talking about a pretty substantial miss to, to excuse a five-point lead in uh, Georgia or whatever. Independent voters break for Trump in all seven states. However, there has been some movement among these voters since April, Kimball said. In Arizona, Trump's support among independents dropped five points from 48% to 43%. In Michigan, Trump's support dropped three from 44 to 41%. And in Pennsylvania, Trump dropped eight points from 49% to 41%. Biden lost support among independents in Georgia by six, 42 to 36%, and Nevada by five. So both candidates in some states have lost support with independents. This isn't just, you know, oh, Trump collapsed by 50 points and that's it. No. It's clear, according to this poll, that both Trump and Biden lost support with independents. Does that mean they're going to break for the other candidates? I don't think so. I just think they're, they're undecided now. It's like, okay, I don't know who I'm going to vote for. I'm just going to say I'm undecided for now. I don't know. But that's what it sounds like, according to Emerson. Could it be off? Maybe. But as of now, that's what we got to go off of. Now, Emerson also polled the... Senate races in Arizona, Michigan, etc. And Republicans are not doing too good in any of them. Except, funny enough, Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, as of now, Eric Hovde's down by only two points. Compare that with February of 2024, where Hovde was down by seven. It's clear that he's gaining steam. Remember when everyone said that, oh, Hovde is pulling so bad in Wisconsin, he can't win. Guess what? This is a consistent trend by the same pollster. This isn't 15 different polls that, that do the same mistake every year where they only pull Milwaukee and call it a day. This is Emerson College. They are a good pollster. They've been doing this for months. And they're showing Tammy Baldwin has stayed the exact same. Well, Hovde has gained every single month. It's only one or two points, but guess what? If he gains one or two points in July and August, he could be leading by September. I just find it ironic that in Wisconsin, we have the best chance at winning a Senate seat. Just look at these other races. Look at Michigan. It's close, but Mike Rogers is kind of stuck at 39 to 40%. Carrie Lake's in trouble. Remember when everyone was saying, oh no, Carrie Lake's going to surge? Really? Ever since April, she went down by two points. And Ruben Gallego has stayed the same. Is it possible for Lake to win? Yeah. But it seems like, as of now, Carrie Lake's quote-unquote surge, that wasn't a surge, by the way, all that happened was some partisan Republicans decided, okay, Carrie Lake is better than Ruben Gallego, and now she's kind of plateaued. That's what the polling's indicating. Same thing in Michigan. We're seeing it in Nevada as well. I mean, look at this. Sam Brown's down by 12, but at least with him, you could say, well, he doesn't have universal name ID. Fine. Even Pennsylvania, McCormick, you know, he's kind of stagnated as well, but at least you could argue, well, at least he's going up sometimes. I find it super ironic that Eric Hovde, of all the candidates, is the one going consistently up over Tammy Baldwin. And that's what everyone was saying. Well, you have no shot at winning against T uh, Tammy Baldwin. We're going we're gonna to win through Nevada and Michigan and even Arizona. But as of now, nope. Even though Trump is doing so good in all these states, the Republican Senate candidate, except in Wisconsin, 
is falling way behind. And you can argue with Wisconsin and even Nevada kind of that these Republican candidates, they don't have name recognition compared to, say, Carrie Lake or, hell, even David McCormick. But even then, Eric Hovde is the only Republican Senate candidate, according to Emerson, of the states like Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, etc., to consistently gain since February. That's a fact. That's a trend. It really looks like Eric Hovde is our strongest chance of the Senate seats. It really seems like it. I can't believe I'm about to say that, but yeah. He has a much better pathway to victory than even Terry Lake as of now. Could that change? Yeah. I guess it can, but as of now... Eric Hovde is looking very strong compared to everyone else. But you notice one thing, even with Hovde, every single Republican Senate candidate is falling behind Trump. Remember what everyone was saying that, oh, Trump is the killing the Republican Party? Really? He's killing the Republican Party so badly that every Senate candidate, it doesn't matter if it's the establishment pick in Pennsylvania, in Nevada, etc., or the quote-unquote MAGA pick in Arizona, Every single one is falling way behind Trump. Yeah, Huffy's a close, but it's still, what, a four-point gap? It's like, so you're telling me Trump is doing so good in these swing states, but every other Republican's falling behind? Like, wait, hold up. Wasn't Trump the one killing the GOP? Because if he was, why is he doing so much better than the electable god known as Sam Brown? Remember that? Everyone was saying that Sam Brown is going to do so good. Right now, he's down by 12. Do I believe that? I don't think so. I think he's going to lose by a couple points, not by 12. But the fact that the same poll, the same thing's occurring in everywhere. Every Republican stuck at like high 30s, maybe the low 40s. That is not good. That should tell you everything about Republicans up and down the ballot. They're not doing as good as Trump. And even though everyone was saying it was with the complete opposite, Trump is going to do so bad and drag everyone down. Really? Trump is doing so bad that every other Republican is falling behind him in the polling. Hmm, that's, uh, that's, that makes sense to me. It doesn't. That argument, once again, is disproven just by polling. Basic polling data indicates, yeah. Trump is doing way better than every Republican. But either way, we just got to see what happens. But I do think at the end of the day, the fact that Trump is leading everywhere and doing way much better than Sam Brown, David McCormick, hell, even Eric Hovde in the swing states should tell you everything about the current state of the race. And this is post-conviction. So you can't just say, well, actually, um, no one knew about the conviction, therefore... Uh, this poll is not important. Well, it happened like, what, three weeks after the fact? And they showed, yeah, Trump right now is leading in every single swing state and tied in Minnesota. But not only that, we had a separate poll released by Ipsos just a couple days ago, I think it was actually today. And they polled the swing states. They had Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Georgia, North Carolina, Arizona, and Nevada. So the only difference is the Emerson poll included Minnesota, while the Ipsos poll included North Carolina. That's the only difference. But ignoring that for a second, Ipsos found Trump was leading these swing states by three points against Biden in a head-to-head -head matchup. When you included RFK, it's, it's a two-point lead. But either way, Emerson found like a two- to three-point lead when you average out the swing states, or even four points, whatever it was. Ipsos found a three-point lead in the swing states. Yeah. So nearly identical numbers. But anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below. Subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell. Follow the social media accounts in the description down below. And of course, join the channel today. Godspeed to all of you.